The radio group button can be used for different choices. And next to the radio button you can have texts and buttons and we will also look at how we can customize our radio buttons with colors so that you can adapt it to different look and feel. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started in the build method and here we create a radio button of a type of int. This means that our value is here of a type of int also. And next to the value we also have a group value and if the value and the group value are the same, then it is selected our radio button. And in this case we have here a 0 and for our value a 1 and this means that our button is not selected. However, if I change it here to a 1, then our button is selected because here we have a value of 1 and our group value has also a value of 1. If we now tap on this radio button, nothing will happen. However, you can also implement this on change property and then you can basically set the selected value to 1, which is the value of this radio button to make it selected. And we also need to set here a set state around so that our UI gets updated. And now if I press here, you see that it is selected. However, we cannot unselect the radio button. If the size of the radio button is too tiny for you, you can also wrap it inside of a transform scale widget and here you can scale your radio button up. And now if I hot reload, you see that the radio button is bigger and you can basically change here the size and you can also put here something like this inside if you like. We also can create here two buttons with which we can unselect our radio button and also select our radio button programmatically. And therefore I have created here this button widget and here inside we have basically a raised button. And now if we click on one of these buttons, then we want to implement here the functionality of it. So let's start with the select radio button and here we simply put the selected value to the value of our radio button so that it has the selected state and we also set here this set state around so that our UI gets updated and if you want to unselect your radio button then you simply put here another value inside than this one and in this case you put here for example a zero inside however you can also put here two inside then this radio button will be also unselected because the value and the group value are not matching anymore. And now I can click here on select radio and you see it gets updated and I also can unselect the radio button. Let's now look at how we can create group buttons where only one value can be selected at a time. To also add here a text or some button next to your radio button, you have here the option of putting instead of a radio, a radio list tile inside. And then you have here the possibility to set a title which will be then displayed next to your radio button. And you also have the possibility to set here a subtitle and then you have here a second text under it. At the end you can show here for example a button or some other widget and therefore you have here the secondary property and here you can basically set for example an outline button and put here some text inside and an on-press handler so if we click on it then we put here the logic inside of what should happen if we click on this button. And now everything works defined so I can click here on this radio button itself. However, I also can click here somewhere in between and then it is also selected. If you want to add another radio button, you simply put it inside of this list view for example and here I put another radio button inside and I also can create again another radio button so that we have three radio buttons. And inside of these buttons, I basically change here the value. So we have for the first button this value of 0, then 1 and here 2. And the same thing is here with an R unchanged. We have here 0, 1 and 2 inside. And this means if I click here on the button James, for example, then the selected value goes to 2 to the value of this radio button with the text of James. However, the value within our onChange property is always the value of our radio button here. So you can also put here a value every time instead inside because he will always get here the right value of our radio list tile. And I will also change it here at the top. And then you see that our radio button example also works pretty fine. At a later point, we will also look at how we can put here other things inside. So we can also put here objects inside and so on. 
However, right now we want to switch over to the customization of our radio buttons. Let's get started with the customization. So here I have two dividers and in between we will build the list of our radio buttons. And therefore I create here at the top a values property where we basically put all the values of our radio buttons inside. So we have here in this case three values. And then we also have here the selected value and here we put basically first of all this value inside. Now we want to create here these radio buttons out of our values. Therefore I go to this build method and here we create a column to display multiple radio buttons under each other. And then we map here over our list of our values here at the top. And then we simply create here a radio list tile. And this time this is of a type of string and not integer anymore because our values here are also of a type of string. And here inside we basically set the value from our values list to this value property. So one of these values will then go here inside and we will basically create all of them. And we also add here this group value to the selected value like before. And what we also do here is to set the text and this time it is of type value. So one of these values will go then there inside. And at the end, we also implement this on change handler. So always this value, which we have put here inside will also then go inside of the selected value. And this looks then like this. However, you don't see it right now because I also have here the background color of black. However, you can see that everything is working here fine. And now we want to set here a black background and we want to customize our radio buttons. Let's get started by creating here two fields. So first of all, a selected color, which is this green color. And we also set here another color for the unselected state, which will be in this case, the white color. And now we need to determine here which radio button is selected. And this one we will put into the active color and the other one in the unactive color. And basically how you can check if a button is selected is by checking if the group value, our selected value is the same as the value of this radio list tile. And now we simply create here our selected color. So basically if it is selected, then we put here the selected color inside. And if it's not selected, we choose here the unselected color, which we have created here at the top. And now comes the easy part to apply this color. So we go first of all to our title and here inside we set a style and put here inside the color which we have here determined. And this will look like this then. So the active state always get here the green color and the inactive states get here the white color. Now what we can also do is to change here the color of our radio button and therefore you simply set here the active color within your radio list tile to the selected color which is our green color here and then this color here will change to a green color. And the last thing is to also put here the inactive color for our radio buttons inside. Therefore we wrap here our column inside of a theme widget and here inside we basically can copy the current theme data and put here another theme data inside. And here inside we want to set the unselected color of our widgets and here you basically put then the unselected color which is this white color inside. And now our unselected widget has here a color of white and you can also change here always the color. So let's put here also a red color for our unselected state inside. And then you see that the unselected state has a red color. Lastly, we want to look again at this example here. And here we want to put, for example, an object inside instead of this integer. And therefore I simply comment here everything out and we only put here one button inside. First of all, we start here by creating a new model object and here I create a name and description, which we want to later show here as a name and as a description under it. And then we also add here constructor and we also overwrite here the equals method and the hash code method so that we later can compare this user object to other user objects. And here inside you basically compare all the fields which you have here at the top inside. Then we go here back to our example and we create here a list of users. So I create here one user, which is then having here the name Mike and also the description which we had here before. And we also add here some other users inside. Our selected value type we change now to the user. And we also put here instead of the zero, our first user from our user list inside. 
And now we also want to change here the radio list style to a type of user instead, because we want to put here these user values inside. Right now we want to create here multiple radio buttons and therefore we map here simply over all of our users. And then we put here for each user a radio list type button inside. And now we only need to modify here our value. So we put it here to this user value instead, so that we every time have here one individual user within our radio list tile as a value inside. And this looks then already like this. So we have here three radio buttons. However, we also need to change here the text. So we need to make it dynamic. So I simply put here the username inside. And we also put here the description of our user inside. And now our buttons are dynamic and we basically can select all of them. If you want to have your more space between your list tiles, you simply can wrap it inside of a container. And here we basically set 16 pixels to the bottom, which means that between our items we have now every time 16 pixels in space. And lastly, if we click here on one of these buttons, you can go to the right profile. And for my case, I simply create here a snack bar and then I put here the user inside and we get here the username. And then we simply show here our snack bar with show snack bar. And now every time if we click here on one of these buttons, then the user is printed within our snack bar. And later you will put here your functionality inside, which will then go to the specific user profile page. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!